Hello and welcome. I'm Sarah Allen and this is The Pitch. If you love all things tech, this is the episode for you. I'm joined by Stephen Wood, Principal and Portfolio Manager for Iger Capital, and we're going to be talking about investing in the cloud and digital space. Stephen, welcome. Thanks, Sarah. So to begin with, can you give me a quick breakdown of the investment universe for cloud and digital in Australia? I guess a couple of things. If we look at, say, for example, the ASX 300, um, we've probably got 25 names spread across uh, a couple of big caps, uh, a few in the ASX 50, sorry, the X50, and then another 20 odd names in the small orders before we then get down to some interesting opportunities, but, but obviously they're you know, more in the realm of micro caps. They are different obviously to the US elephants that utterly dominate the space globally. And in many instances, the companies we're talking about will make major use of the platforms provided by people like Amazon or Apple or, or Google but they tend to be a lot more niche. So on the focus of being more niche, what are the key opportunities then for Australian investors who want to invest in this space? We think what you need to be looking for is the best stocks um, on the ASX are ones that have taken that niche and not only developed a nice business in Australia, but have taken that niche and taken it global. So clearly, you know, not in the sort of remote realm you know, of what has happened to those seven or eight or seven odd US companies. But they've taken a handy little niche and they've expanded well, be well beyond Australia because, you know, at the end of the day, this software, if you get it right, can pretty well be deployed um, using, you know, essentially a SaaS type software platform. It can pretty well be deployed everywhere. Now, obviously there's investment to convert the languages and there's different legal systems and bits and pieces, but like the US companies, not trying to do all things to all people, they have been successful in, in spreading their tech everywhere in many instances. So what you're really looking for in amongst the best companies are, are the management and the product good enough to spread this beyond Australia? Because then you end up with a, a great sustainable opportunity many, many, many years into the future. You're not stuck with the Australian economy. Um, ultimately, the proof of the pudding is in the eating it's one thing to deploy a product, but in the end, as the company gets bigger, you've got to see that leverage where you flip from um, costs perhaps growing faster than revenue in the early years to then kind of lining up. And then obviously what we really want to see as companies get bigger and bigger and bigger is you start to generate a significant positive cash flow margin. Um, the standard bearers, for success on the ASX over the last 15 years, in our opinion, have been Xero, um, the accounting software firm, and WiseTech, which have specialised in all things to do with customs and um, global logistics and trade. Okay, so you've mentioned a couple of company names there. Are there any other niches that you feel Australia is really dominating on a world stage in? Well, there's three companies that we like um, that are clearly a lot smaller than you know Xero or WiseTech, who've really you know, shown the way, if you like, over the last 15 years. And they've got those characteristics that we mentioned, a global opportunity, operating leverage, and then ultimately generating positive cash flows in different degrees. So we'll start with Life360, which has probably been the standout result across the small and mid-cap space in the recent reporting season. They've kind of gone from showing we're growing rapidly we are gonna make some positive cash flows, we're gonna make some positive cash flows to, we're sort of there. And we've got some opportunities, particularly around advertising, to lever that up. And the market's kind of gone, right, we've got the 20% growth, or plus or minus, we've clearly got a global opportunity, and now we've actually got a business that looks like it definitely can pay its way going forward. And part of paying your way going forward means that people will pay for your product and the product can cover its costs. Because in the end, of the, you know, the end, if you've got something that's just being subsidised by the share market and, and that's your reason for being, in the end that comes apart, the company collapses. So Life360 we think has all of those characteristics um, with its sort of you know, family circles and you know, location apps and technology that it runs 
and it's got a lot of opportunities, not only to expand into new markets, the UK's just being launched now, Australia's coming soon, you know, the bulk of its um, base at the moment is the US. Uh, it's got adjacencies in, in um, uh, car crash um, and roadside service, and then the other big one we already mentioned is advertising. So that's, that's Life360. Um, Technology One is another stock um, in the ASX mid caps. Um, it's been around a long time. It is super successful um, in selling software to government bodies like universities, councils, and state government um, organisations like water and power and that sort of thing. Um, they've done a really good job in Australia. So their big opportunity going forward is to sell more products to their existing companies in Australia. But their big opportunity is that they've been toiling away now for 10 years in the UK, trying to pick up the first university client, the first council, the first city council, and they've, they've basically now achieved that. So now it's a case of, right, we've got the playbook, we've got the credibility, now we've got to start doing what we did in Australia and run around all those councils and universities in Britain. At the end of the day, the market's three times the size of ours. So um, there's a company that's more developed, more profitable, um, but it's got a, a wonderful opportunity, particularly you know, um, in the UK. And the third stock we wanted to talk about is also an ASX mid cap, it's Next DC. Now, it, it is Australia's leading data centre supplier. So, you know, when we first met um, Craig in the management of Next DC, they were running one data centre each in Sydney, Melbourne, there might have been a small one in Canberra from memory, uh, and something in Brisbane. Now I think we're up to Sydney 6, otherwise known as S6. So it's expanded monumentally in the next, you know, in the last 10 years, sorry. Um, and the thing with Next DC is what it is doing is supplying um, hubs or buildings for Google, Microsoft, Amazon. And so consequently, it, it is just simply growing rapidly, um, even in the Australian context. And I think the stat they quote is that in the last 18 months, um, as we've switched from desktop to cloud and now cloud plus AI, we've literally generated in the last 18 months more computer-based information than existed cumulatively. So the last 18 months has literally doubled what was there before and it almost appears that that rate of growth, you know, is kind of looks sustainable for the near future. So their business has been utterly transformed by those US majors and they are their biggest customers. And the thing about Next DC is having established their credibility in the Australian market, they've now got, and I know it's early days, they've got a data centre now in Auckland, they've got one in Kuala Lumpur and there's probably opportunities for them to go to places like Japan. Thank you for sharing those insights today. No problem. If you've enjoyed watching this interview, please subscribe to Livewire Markets. Thank you for watching.